Well, welcome. In this video, we'll cover the Rexdog Extreme Bands and how to use them in your trading. This is something that you see on my chart. And I actually released it in the indicator, which you'll find linked below. So if you're new to the channel or you're, you're new to the Rexdog system, you can actually add this indicator and the Extreme Bands to your chart. So let's jump in and let's get started. The first thing we'll cover is what are the Extreme Bands. You'll learn what they are and how they're plotted. We'll dive into the biggest edges you gain by using them in your own trading. And we'll do that by showing examples in multiple markets and multiple time frames. Now I trade and teach using the Rexdog system in multiple markets. The system and guidelines are the same, but obviously each market has a slight different personality. The one thing that I want you to keep in mind as we walk through this video is the fundamentals are pretty much the same. So it doesn't matter what market we're looking at, the general guidelines that I'm gonna talk about here and the fundamentals of momentum and how to view momentum and how to view where there's areas in a chart where you expect reactions are the same regardless of the market. So let's start by outlining what you see here on the chart. So let's move this out of the way. And the first thing I'll highlight, and we're just gonna zoom in a little bit here, is the yellow line is the RDA or the Rex Dog Average. You're not sure what that is. That's really fully described in the indicator text. And the first thing we're gonna cover is these two blue lines here. So I'm gonna pause the video here and I'm gonna remove these yellow lines just so we're focusing on just what we're talking about. So these blue bands are called the ATR bands. And these ATR bands are the average of six ATR measurements and they're added to the RDA price. So the yellow line is the RDA. And then this is a average of six ATR calculations, pretty much the same calculations as the Rex Dog average. And then it's added on top of that. There's obviously two bands. You have an upper and you have a lower. Now, how these are used and how I would suggest you use these is they give you a good feel of momentum. Remember, the Rex Dog system is about momentum. It's about momentum. It's about finding high probability reaction areas and trading around those high probability reaction areas. Now there's really two distinct things that we can get or edges that we can gain by looking at price through the prism of these ATR bands. What happens when price is within these bands and what happens when price is outside of these bands? So let's talk about this at a high level and let's really cover what I just said or, or give context to what I just said. When price is within the ATR bands, what can we say? So if price is trading, like it is, let's pick a particular area, like here, in this particular area of the chart. When price is trading around the RDA, but within both of these bands, what can we say about momentum? And I know I'm trying to ask you a question and you can't answer me, but I'm doing this in, in this way because I can tell you these things, but what I really want you to do in, in all my videos and all the stuff that I put together is think critically and think deeply about this stuff. This isn't just stuff added for a reason. I just didn't create these things just because I thought they were cool ideas. I created them through a lot of blood, sweat, and tears and back testing what works and what doesn't work. So when I ask these questions, I'm, I'm really asking this so you'll discover these and you'll actually add these ideas to your own conviction. So you trade with conviction. That's really why I approach these and I ask questions like I do. So in thinking about this a little bit, what is this? This is an ATR calculation. It's an average of six ATRs and it's added to an average of six moving averages. That's what the RDA is. And if price is trading within these, you could reason that we're not in a high momentum environment. It's a, whatever you want to call it, it's a range, but we can definitely say it's not a high momentum environment. What do we mean by that? Well, let's look at some high momentum moves. So for instance, right here is a high momentum move. We have a, a kind of a, a lull here back to the RDA. And then as it makes its move, so the next leg up, where is it trading? It's no longer trading within either ATR band and it's above the ATR band and it's well above the ATR band. As it comes up, finds another range, comes back down and retests the RDA. Let's take this momentum move. So a momentum move to the downside. What happens here? It's trading within the ATR bands. And then it trades outside of it. This is the momentum move. 
So we see another move up to the RDA, trades within it, kind of trades below, never hits this lower level, comes and trades above the RDA, through the RDA, closes above it, trades outside of the ATR bands, and another momentum move. So the other thing that you can say here as well, this continuation of just, I bet this is probably the overnight. It's the end of the day, the overnight, so low liquidity. But what happens in this move here, there's a high momentum move to the upside. And I say high relative. This is a relative to this chart and what we're looking at here. A high momentum move. And then it stays in a high momentum environment because it's trading above the ATR band and above the RDA. So it's still a high momentum long environment. So I'll reiterate this. The ATR bands are not really used as a trade entry. You can use them as trade entries, and they do sometimes work as that. But really what they are used for is to understand and gauge high momentum areas of the chart or what potentially is happening with momentum. So let's jump to another chart in another market and just reiterate this point. Let's go to Solana USD. We're looking at the 15 minute time frame. Let's go in here and let's just highlight this area here. So here it's trading within the ATR bands. And then as it makes its move, it then trades outside of the ATR band, a big momentum move to the downside. Now you might be saying, okay, you said that, look, it's, it's showing you that it's not a high momentum area when it's trading within that. But here's something right here where you might say well look after it made this move that's not a high momentum move either that's a range so how valuable is this indicator or how valuable is using this if it if it's really not helping you in areas like this and this is an important point that i cover in my videos cover in my training not everything is important at the same time when price is trading within this range, that's something important. It's telling you something. When it's trading outside of this range, it's telling you something as well. But this is relative to the context of the chart and the context of the Rex Dog average. So what we have here is we have, this is a pretty substantial move relative to this actual asset. This is probably about a 13% move or so. Maybe it's less than that. Uh, yeah, 14% move. So this is a 14% move here. If you just take kind of this area here down to the low, that's a pretty decent move. It's outside a standard deviation of how this thing typically moves. You know how things move up. They stair step up and then they take the elevator down. That's what we see here. And then it tends to cool off. But what do we know? The further that we get away from the RDA, it acts as a magnet and it wants to come back and retest it like it did here. So you have to put context around everything you're, you're applying in your trade system. Down here, these ATR bands are virtually meaningless because the most important thing, if we just took this, what we see here on the chart, we just take what's most important on this chart. After this reaction that you see here and then the follow through action here, and then it, as it's starting to maybe form a bottom, the only thing that you're really looking at, if you were just using this indicator in your trading, is there's a high likelihood that it wants to come back at some point in time and retest the RDA area. There's a high likelihood, and that's what we see happening here. It retests, it overshoots it. It doesn't overshoot it enough to go beyond the ATR band, so the upper ATR, and then it sells off again. So that's the important aspect here is that, yes, it, it, it gauges when it's trading within it, you're in a low momentum environment. When it's trading outside of it on the upside and the downside, typically you can gauge that, hey, this, this probably is maybe the start of a move of a momentum move, or we are in a high momentum environment. That, that's really the key to using these ATR bands. You can use them. I, I don't use them. But if you want to test it and look at it, you can use them as entry points. 
I think they're the, the way they were developed and, and the way that I've used them, the way that I teach to use them is that they are for understanding when price is trading around the RDA, but when really you don't have an edge. You don't have an edge when it's trading within here. But you do have one huge edge here, and that's when you add context. So we went from a low momentum environment to high momentum to a range where we expect an RDA test. We have an RDA test. The first test is always the best test. That's where you get your best reaction typically. And that's what we have here. We have our first RDA test. Now, it did overshoot it. Well, what can we say here? And this is where you could look at this and say, well, it overshot it. And one thing that I could do or one rule that I could add to my system is that on an RDA overshoot, for instance, I'm looking for two closes above the ATR band on the upper ATR band. If it does, I'll get out of that trade. And that overshoot of the RDA is invalid. So if we get two closes above the ATR extreme band on the upper side, then I, I'm wrong on this trade. There's a higher probability it maybe is going to go momentum long. And I'm on the other side of momentum, so I need to get out of that trade. So that would have worked out here in this case as well. So, the, so that's, that's, that's the way to look at this. And this is when, when I'm... One thing I've realized is a lot of the indicators that I've released, obviously my training and I go into a lot more detail, but a lot of things that I release, I haven't maybe provided the full context, or maybe you just need a little bit more deeper understanding of the full context to really grasp and use it in your own trading. So there's not much more I could say on these ATR bands. That's, that's really how to use these ATR bands. I'm sure there's other people that could look at these and maybe find different edges in using this. What we'll move on to now is using the extreme bands. Okay, so I added the extreme bands, which are the yellow bands that you see above the RDA. There's uh, two above and two below. These are called the extreme deviation bands, and they are extreme deviation from the current RDA. That's, that's the way to look at this, or that's really how they're designed. Much like Bollinger bands, the extreme Bollinger bands, that's, it's, the way to look at it is it's a deviation from that actual price. So the Bollinger Bands use the 20 simple moving average, and uh, there's then the bands above it, which show you a deviation above that or below it. These act in a similar way, except for there's a couple key things that you'll use these for. The first thing is that you'll use it for possible targets. So where is price going or where is price coming from? You'll use it as those type of targets. There are also there are high probability areas. This is both in real time and historical. We'll go into detail and, and I'll show examples of this. And then there are historical range reaction areas. I know that's kind of a not a weighted phrase, but it doesn't make much sense until you get the context. I'll share the context here and it'll make a lot more sense. And you'll start seeing areas in the chart where this will give you good trade opportunities. So let's cover the first one, which is possible targets. And this is really simple. Let's actually jump to a Forex chart. So Euro JPY, and we'll just talk about these possible targets. So it's real simple. Uh, when price, we'll pick this area here. When price crosses above the RDA and you think, okay, potentially there's a momentum long type of move here, which happened here. Well, your first, uh, the first way that you use these is possible targets. Well, what's the room that it has to potentially move if it's going to move momentum long? And the first range you're looking at just using these is, of course, you're going to look to the left of the chart. But here, you'll say, well, here's, an, here's the extreme area here, up here. Uh, that's where I would expect at least the first reaction point. And then if it gets up to here, this is the next reaction point. Now, the important point or the important thing to look at here is this is when it actually crosses the RDA. So here on this candle is when it crossed the RDA. And when it crossed there, that's the levels that really you see on a chart that's just developing. So you see this level here and you see this level here. That's your levels as the chart is developing. So as the chart is developing, let's actually do that just in replay mode. So we went back to that and it just crossed the RDA. Now you could say on the upside, we have this extreme target here and then extreme target here. Now on the downside, let's say that it was just an RDA test. It's going to fail. We would say, well, here's a target here below this low. 
And then here's an extreme target down below here. So those are two target areas, whether or not you're momentum long or momentum short. Obviously with, with this trade here, you'd be looking at probably a momentum long move would be with momentum. Uh, but you could fade that move just as well if, if it fits what, what you see on the chart. We do know how this unfolds, obviously. So as we play this forward and we see what unfolds here, we see that it comes up, hits the first level. Now the second that it hits this level, we expect a reaction. That's what we got. We got a sell off. It didn't much, not much of a sell off, but we expect a reaction. Now a big reaction or a, I'd say a, not a, I don't want to say standard, but a reaction that you could expect is maybe a retest of the RDA. That's one thing you could re, you could expect. What's another thing that you can expect based on everything we've learned so far? Well, are we in a heavy momentum environment? Well, we are. We're above the ATR band. So while we could expect that, our next thought or our thought might be, or maybe it's reaching for the next extreme band. And I, and I say that, not that it, that's what it's doing, but we're, we're trying to give context. We're, 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 one thing I should say is that if you're trading this system, you're trading it with conviction. And you're trading it with conviction because you've proved to yourself through backtesting, through looking at charts, and through live trading that it works. So when I say that it's, it's trying to get here, this is where it's going. It's not some magical thinking or magical potion that I put on top of the charts. It's a system that I've developed and traded and that I trade with conviction. So that's what my rules say. That's what my trade system says. There's a probability of that. So there's a probability, a higher probability that since it's a momentum long move, it's above the ATR band, that it's trying to go to the next extreme band or it's trying to come back and retest the RDA. That, that's really what my system says. Let's go here and let's just play this out. I'm just I'm not going to do this long. I just want to show what happened and what unfolds and what we can glean from this. So we can see here we got a reaction. You could say that everything that happened within here is a reaction of hitting that even though it went above this high. Now what happened in this reaction? Well, it never closed below the ATR band. So we're still in a momentum long environment. Gives us a little more confidence to maybe even re-add on this pullback. Re-add on this pullback, add to the position with a target up here. Now, what if we add here, where is our actual extreme band? If we want to get aggressive, we could say, well, our extreme band's up here now. So what type of move do we have here if we were to add here? We have another 20 pips here, roughly. On an Keep in mind, this is an aggressive type of trade because, and I say aggressive, it's relative, but aggressive because, well, we, we're in a momentum long move. If it's going to move up here, that's a that's a another extreme band hit. But you're being aggressive with that trade, so you definitely should be able to actively manage it or take your profits early because if it hits, what we know about these extreme band areas is there's typically a reaction. And that reaction doesn't mean that it's going to sell off and continue selling off, but there's a reaction, typically the opposite of the move. So if it's long... The reaction is to the downside, and the reaction is typically back to the RDA. That's where it's trying to get to. And this is a key point in trading. You're always weighing what is possible against what is probable. That's really what you're, what you're thinking about. When price is closed above here, you're thinking how many times or how often does price close above the first extreme band and then reach the second extreme band? Is that something that is highly probable does it happen a lot is what you're asking and the, the answer to that question is no it doesn't happen a lot it, it's not extremely rare but it doesn't happen a lot so you're trading accordingly you're, you're you're taking your risk reward and and you're taking your profits quick or you're executing that trade with that knowledge that's really key now what ends up happening here i think is that it ultimately does reach the actual upper of the extreme band. There it does. So it reached our target. We look like geniuses. And on that trade, we went out and bought a McLaren. That's right. If I didn't tell you, I pretty much went all in on this trade. I added every account I possibly could, as much leverage I possibly could. And obviously the trade went in my favor. Now I'm actually going to take my account again and I'm going to do the same thing. This is, and I've used these areas, and you'll you'll see this here as we move forward in this video, why I use these areas and why I'm not talking about in real time. 
What I mean by in real time is in real time, where is this extreme band? In real time, and I, and I say that with this current close, this extreme band is up here. So using in real time the extreme band, what you're saying is that this momentum move is just going to continue with strength. So if you're using it in real time, so when this candle closed, you're saying here, this level, when this candle closed, you're saying it up. I mean, it's pretty much a range, and we'll get to this here in a second. This is where I think this aspect of this indicator will open up a lot of eyes. But what you're saying here is that if you're using it in real time and you're always projecting upward, you're saying that this extreme move is going to continue, knowing very well that the further it gets away from the RDA, that it wants to come back and retest it. So we know that. So what we're thinking about now that it hit our target here, well, let's just take the account, let's re-leverage up, and let's go all in on the way down. Let's let's do that. And where's our target? Well, our target is the RDA. We hit our first our, our extreme band number one, and we hit our extreme band number two. So we're going to do a fade trade because that's what it is. You're in a fade environment right now. You're fading the overall momentum of the move with an RDA check. That's really our target. What's that move? Let's say... Let's say that we sell on the next candle and we just keep selling. We've got a 20 pip move or so, less than that. 19, 18 pip move. So that's what that's what room we have for this trade. Where's our stop loss? Well, the, the easy answer, the simple answer, is if we short this and we start shorting, our stop loss could be anything above that high, which is the most obvious place to put your stop loss. So if you want to win in trading, definitely put your stop loss right where the obvious area is. I say that tongue in cheek. The next non-obvious place is really where the extreme band is printing. So the extreme band is printing here. We've got a 8 pip uh, stop loss. So that's a pretty good risk reward here. And let's do that. So that's the trade we would do. So we'll do this trade here. And then we'll just move forward one at a time. So we're adding. We are going short. And my plan is I'm going to short. I'm going to keep adding to this thing uh, until it closes. I'm just going to keep adding to this thing. So that's really my plan. If it closes above this RDA area here, I might consider getting out. Maybe I was really wrong about the trade. So let's move forward here. We see the next one. Let me just move this out of the way. So we add it again. And this is where I, I, I wanted to share an example like this. And I want to do more of this around real trading. Real trading is messy. A lot of traders want these rules and these hard, fast rules. And you can get certain hard, fast rules. And we'll talk about this in, in further videos that I'll release. But trading is messy every single day, no matter what level you're at. It never becomes easy. It never becomes safe. Trading never, ever becomes safe. You'll never feel safe in trading. I don't care what level you're trading at. If you do, you're probably in for some reckoning. If you ever feel safe in trading, you're probably in for some reckoning, and it's going to hurt bad, and it's going to hurt worse than it ever did before if you ever feel safe in trading. I'm not saying that there's not times where you see your edge and you just uh, put the pedal to the metal. That happens. But if you feel safe in trading, you're probably going to get spanked pretty hard. So, yeah, is it difficult to trade? Go short here? Yeah. It's a great entry for a short for a fade trade. If you're going to fade, there's no other way to fade. So let's move forward. You see here? Okay, now we're starting to feel okay about ourselves a little bit. We see our first red candle, but it did find some support. Next candle, we're, we're starting to feel a little bit better. The next candle, we feel really good. We are even maybe tempted to say, oh, it's not going to reach my target. I actually probably need to take some profit. So we're probably tempted to say that at this point in time, especially as it bounced off the upper ATR band here. Let's see if it reached our target. And it did reach our target there on that candle here. Almost got there. Uh, probably didn't hit it within the actual... We probably didn't get taken out here, uh, given the actual... Not range, but I'm, I'm drawing a loss for the word that I'm looking for, but I know what it is. I should know it. Uh, given the spread. So we probably didn't meet the spread there. Uh, but on this candle here, we got taken out, and it is an overreaction to the RDA. Here's where maybe you're potentially thinking about, let's actually, we haven't quite left the McLaren dealership yet, so let's take our money and let's go back long and put our stop loss pretty tight here because if we get a close, we could say our stop could be here, but that's a little wide. Let's just take a half. So if it does close below 
this actual uh, ATR band were then maybe in a momentum short. And maybe this was the, the price it was looking for and it just wants to sell off from here. So this is, that's, what we, that's what we have in the back of our mind here. Let's move forward. All right, we don't quite feel like a genius yet. We're still a little bit worried. Okay, now we're, we're starting to feel we're about to break even. We're feeling okay. Let's see what it does from here. And some, of course, some people could say, look, you're cheating because you already saw what unfolded. I'm trading the system. I'm trading the Rex Dog system. This is not, I'm not breaking anybody that knows the Rex Dog system. If you traded it, you can look in this and say, yeah, you're, you're trading, you're trading the guidelines. You're trading within the, the guardrails of what the system says. So I, I I'm going to stop here because I don't want to get fixated too much on just breaking down a trade and just kind of going down this rabbit hole. What I want to share is this is just execution of this and what it would look like in real time. This is and, and this is using the the concept of what the extreme bands are telling you, which are that they are, are good areas for targets when you're entering that trade. But that's only one component of these extreme bands. Let's talk about the next component, which I think is a is a really good or it will be eye opening for a lot of people and, and a different way to look at things that I think a lot of people overlook. And for that, we're going to go to, I don't know, let's go to XRP USD. So just go to the crypto market. Remember, this doesn't matter what market. It, the, the guidelines, the rules, how you're looking at this really is the same. And in, in this concept of, of using these extreme bands, what you're looking for in the chart is, is there's two ways to use these. You look for extreme price movements, and then you take those levels, and then you look for ranges that make the extreme bands level out and you look at those as important levels uh, let me share examples of that just so it'll be very clear so when we talk about love or when it levels out when price levels out let's look at here on xrp it doesn't matter really where we go we just need to find a place where it's starting to level out so you could say here at this point in time we're looking at the extreme bands at this point in time, when we get to this candle here, it's above the RDA, we can say that this really is a range. This has created a range here. You'll see that? Through this, there's been a range where it's kind of leveled out. There, there, you could see there's a sell-off here, and then the extreme bands, sell, you know, obviously moving with it as, as you would expect. But then there's a range here where, it, where it's created a range. Let's take another area and let's take the extreme upper band. Do the same type of thing. So there's kind of a range here. Take that same area. Now, one of the things that I'll get into in the private training a lot more, uh, because I think we're going to create something very specific around this, is that... Typically, this this happens on only one side. It doesn't happen on both sides. Typically, the range only happens on one side. So in this particular aspect, the range really happened on the upside. So you have the range on the upside. So going forward in the chart, this is an area that you would expect a high reaction. You would expect a high reaction if price enters in this area here. And you would expect a high reaction if price enters here. Remember, this is a range. Okay. And of course, I cherry picked the perfect example, but we could go to any chart and we could look at the same type of thing. So I'm not so just share that. What happens here? Price came up to this level. Remember, we defined this range back here. Price came up to this level, this range here, and it sold off pretty heavily, and it had a pretty decent move here to the downside. Another thing that you could highlight here, and we'll get to the second point, is you have a you you highlighted a area in the chart where these extreme bands started to range, started to create a range. So important levels. And let's step back a second. What's happening in price action here? Price action here is, of course, it's above the RDA. We're momentum long. We get that. We can say that. But it's it's actually in a range as well. So it's in a range. So this range elevated up to a deviation above it is telling you another important level above the chart. So if this range stays momentum long, because it ranged here, a deviation from this range, you could say 
and I've used this term in the training, you could say a measured move. A measured move from this range using these extreme bands is telling you the first measured move is here, which is small. The larger measured move is here. So it could be used for targets, but it also is used for heavy reaction areas. So the next point to add to this is then when you get a, a big move in one direction, and then you see a spike in these, these are other important areas that you can use in the future. So we can put a, a, a level there. Let's do it on the downside here. This is a downside. So what else do we see here? And I'm, I'm sharing, I don't want this video to be longer than 30 to 45 minutes. It looks like it's going to be about 30 minutes, if not a little bit longer. But what do we see here? We see, okay, here's, I want to take a step back and, and really just explain this step by step. We have a extreme, a, a, a big momentum up move with a, a, a reaction here on this candle here which then creates a spike in the extreme band, which then we use as a, an important level that if price hits or gets to, we would expect a reaction. And if it starts trading above it, that would tell us something about momentum as well. That would tell us something about strength in the market. What do we see that happens here? The first time that it really breaches that level, we do see a strong reaction. So it did go above that. So if you trade right at that level, obviously, you're, you're going to have to be uh, really understanding what you're doing. You're fading that move. You're fading a strong move. But let's contrast this with just uh, a simple trade idea or a simple trade concept. The simple trade concept is we've got a high here that's been rejected. And, well, a good fade trader is going to look at that high and is going to trade that against that high. Is going to go short against that high but how far do you go before you get out of that trade and you say okay it's going against me well you'll learn as you become a fade trader as you fade trade and you add fade trades to your trade system that just trading simple fades where it just gets above above the high can give you an initial reaction and we do have an initial reaction here but you have to be very nimble you have to also understand that there's a lot of times where it just extends above that high, especially in a high momentum environment. So you need to be very mindful of that. So this gives you an instant area where, okay, above that high, this is the extreme above that high. This is maybe where I would want to start entering a fade trade if price gets there in the future. This is a high probability area that anything here and above should have some type of reaction. Now, of course, this is all within the context of what's happening in the chart. Is this the opening range, for instance? Is this the New York Open? Is this th There's a lot of things on this chart that I haven't added that have context to this. So there's a lot more than just, hey, let's just use this and trade with it. There's other context that, that needs to be applied. But just this alone, once price, remember the first test is always the best when price got up here. Okay, we'll add right here. We'll give it one more candle close, and then we'll add at that next candle close. And then if it doesn't go in our favor on the next candle, well, well, we'll probably get out. Well, we see here we have a reaction. We have a reaction down. I don't know what that move is, but we can look and see that move. It's a good scalp. This is about a 2.3% move. So it's a good scalp trade if you're doing a fade trade. But what else do we have? Well, we have a new high there that was made there. And I don't know if it's a new high, but we have a, a recent high. So we'll take that area of the chart here. We'll earmark it as, okay, we've got a new high. We've got a new extreme level. If price ever gets there, I'm going to short it again. I'm just showing fade trades here because momentum trades are simple. Uh, they're simpler to execute and, and explain. But this shows you another area. And, and this is also look at this as the inverse. Let's say you are momentum trading. Momentum trading means that you're not going to be adding going long up here. You're going to wait for a retest of the RDA. So, like, like me, took all your McLaren money, you went long here on the retest of the RDA because XRP is going to $100. So, you just know XRP is going to $100. So, you're trading the RDA here. You're going to have a tight stop loss, uh, stop loss just below the ATR band. And where's your target? 
Well, of course, you're going to use levels. You're going to look at this. You're going to say, well, there's my level. That's an obvious target here. It's going to retest there. We're going to expect a reaction. We do see a reaction. But what's my aggressive target, you could say, is where it topped on the extreme band. So that's my target. Pretty good risk to reward ratio there. And 4% or 3.5%, pretty good trade. As you can see, it unfolds there. Same thing on the downside. Same thing on the downside. And you could do the same thing on the extremes. What I mean by that, on the extremes of the highs and the lows. So you have an extreme high here, right here. You can take the same concept and take the same concept. Sorry, I got to and actually say, okay, here's the low of that extreme band. Here's the first low. It's right here. That's the first area. And then here's the next area. Let me, because I think one of the things, and, I, and if you got this far in the video, video, congratulations. One of the things to keep in mind is that you're always putting context to what you're trading. God, I sound like Joe Biden there all of a sudden. That scared me. You're always trying to put context to what you're trading. And by context, let me explain this very simply. We have a high here. We take that extreme range and we want to use it moving forward. We want to say, okay, there's a high that happened. We're going to use this moving forward as a high reaction area. Obviously, we have another high put in here. So we could say, okay, well, to be a little bit more aggressive, we could use this high here, up here. We want to use that area here as the extreme band. So we have a new high put in. In context, what do we see unfold? Well, we see it's momentum long. There's no, you know, there's, you really shouldn't be aggressively short because you're momentum long. And if you're aggressively short, you should be shorting at fade areas that are high probability fade areas. High probability fade area is the first extreme band. There's a, a there is a reaction here. Reacts, but this whole time, the context of this, this whole time we're in a high momentum long environment. We're above the RDA. I bet if we had the other indicators on here, the Rexdog system, we'd be momentum long there. But we're above the ATR band this whole time. We're above the ATR band until something important happens. Until it hits this extreme level here, it tags that price, and then it sells off. So it tags that price, it sells off, and then it does sell off, and it sells off back down to kind of another level that we earmarked before. So we earmarked this level before. It got close to it. It didn't tag it because it's still trying to stay momentum long. That's what it's really doing. And a little bit of overshoot of the RDA. Comes back up, gets momentum long again. And if we if we look at this level as still important, it trades through this level. And that really is a high. So you would expect that level to be a high because that's what happened here. So you could even say here, well, what should we do with this high? Should move it up here. And then that's our first point where it does come up here, closes above it, and it uses that level as a reaction area here. You can see that here. And then it uses that area of support. I can just kill on narrating the whole chart. But I didn't cherry pick this, this concept or this to go to multiple charts. I could make this video another 45 minutes long. I just wanted to introduce you to these concepts or really explain these these extreme bands in context in full context to give you a couple ways that you can use them in your own trade system and to recap and, and to finish this off because i really don't want this to be longer than 45 minutes uh the atr bands are, are a measure of momentum trading within them you're in a low momentum environment trading outside of them you typically in a high momentum environment although it's still context you can still have ranges obviously outside of them uh so looking at that uh, these extreme bands, these extreme bands can be used as targets. You can use them as targets as when you enter a trade, there's, they're telling you that this is an extreme in the price movement, and then this is the next extreme. Uh, and then you can use these as new highs and new lows are discovered. You can use these, and let's actually just close the video. I'm going to close the video. I'm not going to ramble on, but we're going to find, I'm going to find a low area. We're going to narrate through that, and then uh, we'll close the video. So this one I did cherry pick, obviously, but we're in Tesla. We're looking at Tesla in the five minute time frame. And what do we have? We have a low here, a very low extreme. That's something that should really, as you look at this chart, and as you just come back at this chart, you should it should really 
stand out. Well, we'll look at that extreme there. Look at that that extreme price. Maybe if price gets back there, maybe that's something I want to look around and trade around. One way you could do this, real simple, and I don't think we can go to the one minute chart, but can't really get any closer than that. It You might not even got picked up if you traded right at that level. But look at that. Price came down to here and then had a strong reaction. Of course, this is Tesla. Had a strong reaction and, uh, you know, it was about a 5% move. So this is an example on the downside. A print of the actual extreme band on a day before it actually gapped up. So this is a, a this day here it closed on the low. That's the end of the year, 13 December 21. The next day that it opened on 3 Jan, it gapped up. Well, this is an area that you could even say the end of the year. This is the end of the year extreme band print. So you could look at this print as an uh, important level. And what happened on the next day? The following day, if you take this print to where it was at here on this candle here, it closed or it opened, it gapped up above the actual extreme band. That's showing you some strength. And what did it do? And this is the other thing that you can you, you should you should get adept at. If you use these bands, you start to get a feel for how price moves around them, especially if you're able to do intraday trading like scalping. You'll start to get a feel of like, okay, I'm not arguing with the chart. We have a gap and go day. This is pretty much what you call a gap and go day, which is it gapped up. And then it just went. Now it didn't go uh, in heavy, big momentum moves, but it was pretty much gap and let's just stair step up. So it's a gap and go day. There really was no, you couldn't hang your hat on going short any any with any strength because we're above the, the extreme band here. So you just don't want to argue with the chart in that aspect. All your fades are above every high. So if it's above a high, maybe you fade, but you're acting quick. So this is an example, once again, it's chart memory using the extreme bands. So the final words I'll leave you with is below you'll find a link to the Rexdog indicator that was used in this video. If you have any questions or comments, obviously leave a comment below. You'll want to subscribe. You'll find a link to the Discord group. You'll want to join the Discord group. You can ask any question about trading. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.